and I will actually start by asking you a question. How many of you are taking the car to work every day, commuting by car? Okay. And how many are commuting by public transport? Oh, most of you. Good. How many of you are feeling like this? <laughs> uh, this is basically how I feel many times going by the car and, and commuting to work. Now, this is of course a global problem. Um, basically, major cities, all major cities of the world have commuting issues. And uh, it's not unusual, for instance, in Sao Paulo, which many of you know, that there are 200 kilometers long traffic jams. Um, in um, Beijing, it's even worse. Just a few years back, they had a 12-day traffic jam. Probably a bit of a record. Now, we don't need to go to the extreme to realize that this is a huge problem. And it always comes up in many of the studies that we do that commuting is one of the big pain points for city dwellers. It causes uh, frustration, it causes stress and anxiety, it's unpredictable, you don't know when you're going to get there or so on. So the big question is, is there any way to make it more positive or get a better experience of commuting? Is there anything we, we can do to do this? So, Noreen, is there anything we yes, can do? Yes, I think so. So let's talk a little bit about that. So our vision was called Connected Commuting. So what does that really mean? Well, we asked ourselves, my neighbors leave home from work about 15, 20 minutes before I do every day, and they take the same route as me. So why can't they tell me what to expect before I leave the house? And we have all kinds of information at our fingertips nowadays. So why is this question so hard to figure out about how, when, where do I commute? At the same time, we know that there are billions of smartphone applications being downloaded. And many of these address traffic and transport-related problems. We also know about the tremendous power of social networks and how much we love those apps that let us connect with each other. So we asked ourselves, what if we could enable some more of these and encourage some more of these connections to enable a better commuting experience? And to answer this question, we set up a task force. And the members of this task force were the New Cities Foundation, Ericsson, uh, the San Jose Department of Transportation, the University of Berkeley in Citrus, um, and two commuter apps called Waze and Rodify. And where better to study this, this question of technology and, improved in, and how it improves commuter experiences than in the heart of Silicon Valley in San Jose? Um, so Patrick, tell us a bit about the goals of the project. Yeah, the, the research question that we set up with, with from the beginning was basically, can an enhanced networking among commuters actually lead to a better commute or a better experience commuting? So in order to do that, we wanted to understand what is the sh sharing of information among commuters? What kind of information can they share or do they share? And how does this sharing of information among commuters actually impact their commute? So we wanted to look at both car transport and public transport, both of these. So therefore, we had both the uh, app of Waze, uh, which is basically a, an app, a traffic navigation app. It has a lot of, of features. Uh, the good thing is that you can go in and leave comments to fellow commuters. You can go in basically in a category called traffic jam or accident and leave a comment and so on. Um, but you can also do it in a shit chat category. So you can just talk basically to other fellow commuters in, in different ways. Um, and uh, the public transport um, uh, app was Roadify. It has the similar feature in the sense that you can also there leave comments because that was what, was what we wanted to study. How does people actually, what do they say and how does it feel basically when they start uh, sharing a lot of information? So we did a text analysis um, or text sentiment analysis. So basically looking at the comments and categorize them whether they were positive or negative and um, what they actually said. So when they started talking about time and train and buses for the public part, what did they say? Uh, was it a positive experience or not? And also for the uh, traffic part uh, for, for car, it was the same thing. So what we could do was then map these sentiments on a map, basically saying, where do people be more happy or more negative? So this is the negative part. You can basically see where there's a lot of dots is where they actually were more negative. 
So, of course, you can start an understanding where are the negative feelings generated in this city. Um, but even more interesting was the shit chat category. Shit chat was basically people g going in and wanting just to say things to their fellow commuters. And here there was a much more positive sentiment. A lot of hi, hello, and how do you feel today, and a good day to start going somewhere, and so on. And they started to share a lot of other positive feelings. And this was, of course, interesting when we started to understand how people share information and what they want to share information, because it became a platform for that. Uh, but this was the first part of the, of the task force. The second part of it, Noreen, please tell us. Sure. So the second part of the study, we did some focus group interviews where we looked at uh, both connected and unconnected commuters. So we compared the experiences of people who um, are using these kinds of apps to con communicate with each other um, to, those of, uh, to those people who are not. And the purpose of that was basically to figure out, is a connected commute really a better commute? And what we learned is that uh, some very interesting insights from the information that we got from these interviews. Uh, for example, we learned that in connected car commuters or drivers, are more satisfied with their commutes than their unconnected counterparts. So we learned this from the words that they used in terms of how they felt in association with their, with their commutes. And what was interesting is that uh, they revealed that because of connected commuting, they were able to reduce their stress in commuting because they had access to real-time information that increased the predictability of their journey so they knew uh, what to expect when they were on the road. And in some cases, it helped them save time because they could tra uh, navigate a tra tricky situation. Another interesting element that they revealed to us was that it wasn't just about re receiving timely information through which the commute experience was better, but it was also their own ability to share useful information with others that made the commute more enjoyable. So what they said was that uh, being able to give their fellow commuters more useful information made them feel like they were helping the world. So from these two parts of the study, what we have now is a more holistic understanding of the benefits that connected commuting can bring to all of us frustrated commuters. And what we realize is that there are three main groups that can benefit from, from the findings of our project. Um, the first are governments, city governments and transport agencies. Um, the connected commuting comments that people are leaving in these applications are a source of highly valuable real-time information that can be very useful for understanding commuter, commuter, commuter trends. And so with the information that people are sharing, uh, transport agencies can have a better understanding of how people move and feel and be able to respond accordingly. And the second group are all of you app developers out there. So for example, um, since commuters like to chit-chat during their commute, a possible feature to include in, in your apps that help commuters uh, is a feature that lets them do just that. Alternatively, you could develop a positive category like a scenic train drive or a pleasant route, something that offsets the negative sentiments associated with traffic jam or a hazard, for example. And then last but not least, all of us, citizens, we all benefit from connected commuting in the ways we talked about earlier. Through the reduction of stress and saving time um, and interacting with each other to make it better. So what have we learned from this project? In short, that connected commuting works and it's already happening today. So what we'd like to encourage today as a next step is for all of you to really help and encourage your cities to develop the real-time analysis tools of this very powerful social network data to inform decision-making and to develop the kinds of programs that can further continue to help uh, improve commuting. And so we think this would have a huge impact on urban mobility. What do you think, Patrick? Yes, I think it's a call for action. I think this is a possibility for all of us that are passionate about uh, commuting and trying to solve it to basically put in our efforts now. We have and uh, now seeing that a connected commute is a better commute, let's make it even better. Thank you very much.